영어 동어 세상 리틀박스 The Story of Dr. Doolittle Chapter 1 Introduction Now this isn't going to hurt at all, Morris. Oh, hmm, <laughs> hello. I'm Dr. Doolittle. It's nice to meet you. I'm Jip, Dr. Doolittle's dog. Did you know he can actually talk to animals? He's amazing. Oh, no, not amazing at all. I learned the animal language from my friends. <coughs> Dr. Doolittle, Dr. Doolittle, the mice refuse to eat their rice. Oh, <laughs> I need a rhyme. The mice refuse the rice. The mice refuse the rice. Oh, this is Gub Gub. He talks a lot, but he has a good heart. Don't you, Gub Gub? Oh, hello. I'm Dab Dab. As you can see, I'm a duck, but I can swim faster than most dolphins or fish. Come in. I checked on your money, Doctor. You are spending too much money on... Uh, oh, uh, hello. Tutu is the smartest of all my animal friends. He is great at math and has a very good ear. Did you tell them about Polynesia and Chi-Chi? Or how about the push-me-pull-you? The what? I have never heard of that. Would you like to hear my story? About how I came to understand the animal language? About our journey to Africa? About how we escaped from pirates? Yeah, let's get some popcorn and soda. Well, I'm sorry, but I will have to begin the story next week. Today, I must give Morris this shot. Ouch! I'm Squeak Squeak. Join us every week for the fun and exciting stories of Dr. Doolittle. The Story of Dr. Doolittle Chapter 2 Puddleby Dr. John Doolittle lived in a small town called Puddleby. The townspeople knew him well. Dr. Doolittle looked after sick people and gave them medicine. Dr. Doolittle had many pets. Mice lived in the piano. He kept a squirrel in the closet. He also had rabbits, a very old horse, chickens, pigeons, lambs, and even a hedgehog in the basement. Sarah, the doctor's sister, was his housekeeper. She did not like having so many animals around. They made the house messy. Even his patients were not happy. Oh, Dr. Doolittle, my knees hurt again, Mrs. Keebler whined as she slowly sat down in his office. Oh! She suddenly cried and stood up again. I'm sorry. Oh, it's only Spiky, my hedgehog. Dr. Doolittle smiled at the sleepy animal she had sat on. Most of his patients never came back. The more animals Dr. Doolittle had, the fewer patients he had. We are running out of money, John, Sarah complained. Money. Dr. Doolittle sighed. What a headache. Well, we can't live without money, Sarah said angrily. Of all the pets he had, Dr. Doolittle's favorites were Jip the dog, Gub Gub the baby pig, Dab Dab the duck, Tutu the owl, and, of course, his parrot, Polynesia. You are my best friends, he often told them. Woof, woof, barked Jip. Quack, 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 quack. Oink, oink, snipe. 
Dab Dab and Gub Gub cry cheerfully. Quack! Polly wants a cracker. Polynesia chirped. <laughs> Choo Choo watched silently from the bookcase. I'm getting tired of this, John. Sarah shouted one day. No one wants to come here. They don't like the animals. She waved her hands around. But I like animals better than people, the doctor replied. Well, without money, you can't feed them, or me, or yourself. With that, Sarah stomped out of the room. But Sarah was right. Soon they ran out of money. Dr. Doolittle had to sell his piano, so the mice had no place to live. Don't worry, you can live inside my sock drawer, the doctor said. Even Dr. Doolittle's bedroom was filled with animals, but he didn't mind sharing. There you'll be safe and warm, he told the mice. Now the townspeople didn't go to Dr. Doolittle anymore. They traveled to another town when they needed a doctor. The only friends he had left were his pets. Money, Dr. Doolittle sighed. What a headache. The Story of Dr. Doolittle Chapter 3 Animal Language One quiet afternoon, something extraordinary happened. Snot! 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 cried the little pig. He seemed to be in pain. Why don't you look after your animals? Sarah shouted. What's the matter, Gub Gub? Dr. Doolittle asked. He ate something bad, of course, Sarah said. No, he hurt his foot, the doctor said. How did you know that? Sarah asked. Well, I think Gub Gub told me. He answered. Are you out of your mind? She shouted. Animals can't talk. Hmm, maybe I am crazy, Dr. Doolittle said to himself. No, you're not. You're talking to me right now, Polynesia pointed out. But you're a parrot, the doctor replied. You understood, Gub Gub, Polynesia continued. But that's impossible. Dr. Doolittle sat up. Dr. Doolittle, you have the gift, the parrot said. What gift? The doctor asked. You can understand animal language, she answered. Dr. Doolittle was very excited. I didn't know animals have their own language, he said to Polynesia. Most humans don't, but animals speak to each other just like people do, she said. Animals also talk to people all the time. I'm hungry. I don't want to play. I'm hungry. Oh, look at the yarn. Jump, Muffin. Jump, Kitty. Then why can't people learn animal language? Dr. Doolittle asked. Only those who truly love animals can learn it, nodded Polynesia. Yes, I do love animals very much, admitted the doctor. <laughs> Every day, Dr. Doolittle studied the animal language with Polynesia's help. Animals don't always talk with words, Polynesia whispered. We can speak with our eyes, our tails, our feet, with everything. <laughs> what do you think Jip is saying? It looks like he is playing, the doctor answered. Polynesia shook her head. But what he's really saying is, get off my back, you annoying flea. It wasn't easy to learn the animal language. Dr. Doolittle made many mistakes. This one wants to live in the garden, but the other one doesn't, the doctor observed. 
Listen more carefully, Doctor," said Polynesia. Squeak, squeak, cheep, 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 squeak! Cried one mouse. Oh! The doctor shouted excitedly. He stepped on her feet, so she's angry with him. That's right, and he didn't even say sorry. Squeaked the mouse. Soon, Doctor Doolittle could speak and understand the animal language perfectly. Oh, please, someone help me! The horse cried. I'll help you. Doctor Doolittle gently answered. You can speak our language. The horse whispered. Yes. Now tell me what the problem is," said the doctor. "I'm so thirsty and hot, but the old man won't give me any water," complained the horse. "You can have some water from my garden," Doctor Doolittle offered. "You seem to understand animals," the old man said. "You should be an animal doctor," 